How is that for a dramatic opening to the section on digestion and absorption of carbohydrates? The ultimate goal of digestion and absorption of sugars and starches to dismantle them into such small molecules that our body can absorb them through the intestinal walls, specifically the jejunum and the ileum of the small intestine. We need to take large carbohydrates and break them down into glucose. We need glucose pretty much for everything. In other words, you have to have energy. You have to be able to repair, maintain, grow, and reproduce structures, tissues, cells, and also for regulation through the nervous system because it keeps neurons functional and the endocrine gland glands. So it keeps those endocrine glands functioning. Think back to when we started to talk about digestion. The initial breakdown of carbohydrates actually begins in the mouth because of the addition of salivary amylase. You'll remember that not a lot of digestion actually occurs in the mouth because the food doesn't stay there long enough to have much happen. We need to undergo the process of mastication to chew high fiber foods, which will slow the processing of foods containing starch. We've already talked about sal salivary amylase, and that's there to start hydrolyzing starch into shorter chain starches and into disaccharides. In other words, we're breaking down larger, more complex carbohydrates into simpler and simpler and simpler forms. In the stomach, the bolus connects with that highly acidic environment. And the stomach will also contain a few enzymes responsible for digestion of proteins. All of those will inactivate sal salivary amylase, which means that carbohydrate digestion stops when the carbs are in your stomach. Fibers are going to be important. So the dietary fibers in the food that you eat will help slow gastric emptying, which is another health benefit, by the way. You start to feel full, satiated, because of that slow gastric emptying. So that's one of the fun functions of fibers, is to create that feeling of fullness, which helps you regulate your diet. The small intestine is the hotbed of digestion, which we already know. Most processing of carbohydrate go on in the ileum and before that, the jejunum. The pancreas will secrete a whole bunch of digestive enzymes, including, including pancreatic amylase, which is the major carbohydrate digesting enzyme. It will enter the small intestine from the pancreas through the pancreatic duct. It's going to break down polysaccharides into shorter chains and into disaccharides. And then the final breakdown through hydrolysis is going to occur actually at the outer membranes of the cells that line the intestinal walls. Specific enzymes are going to finish off the digestion process of these carbohydrates. This shows you the major digestive enzymes and where they're produced and where they're released and what the pH level is. You will see that salivary amylase is neutral in terms of pH, but all of the rest are basic. And that is because of that very acidic material that is leaving the stomach, which is pretty cool. So once the sugars, which are being broken down, reach that intestinal cell membrane, you're going to have specific enzymes that will break down specific di disaccharides. Take a look at the names, maltase, sucrase, lactase. I bet you can tell me what they break down. ASE indicates an enzyme that 
suffix and indic indicates an enzyme. So anytime you see ASE, think enzyme. So maltase, you betcha, hydrolyzes maltose, sucrase, you betcha, hydrolyzes sucrose. And last but not least, our friend lactase is going to break down lactose through hydrolysis. All disaccharides that are broke, broken down contribute at least one glucose molecule to the body. You know that maltose contributes too. Fructose and galactose are converted by the liver into glucose through some chemical reactions. Now, that material gets the large intestine. It takes a few hours. And you'll remember that only a small amount of anything that has nutritious value is found at the distal end of the ileum. And sure enough, same goes here, only a small percentage of the sugars and starches that have been moving through your small intestine will remain in the GI tract. All indigestible fibers remain there because you don't have the enzymes to break them down, so they stay. Resistant starch are those carbs that are not digested in the small intestines. And those are going to be found in raw potatoes, some on red fruits, whole beans. Not, none of those sound like they'd be great to be eating. So those resistant fibers and starches, however, are going to be important for some health reasons, which you need to know. They attract water, which means that they help soften stools. They also increase the production of mucus in the large intestine. So if you have constipation, eat more fiber, and that will help with your constipation. That normal flora in the large intestine can ferment some of those resistant carbohydrates. And as the bacteria are using that res those resistant carbohydrates for fuel, they are going to generate water, gas, and short-chain fatty acids, which are important for your health. Those are going to get absorbed through the walls of the small, uh, sorry, the large intestine and will provide some energy for the intestinal cells. Watch that, fiber and big diet, super interesting and good info. Yes, information will be on your assessment potentially. So take a look-see. And now, once you have your carbohydrates in your body, what do you do with it? How do you get into the circulatory system? So a small amount of glucose can actually be absorbed through the mucosa of your mouth. We already know where most nutrient absorption takes place in the jejunum and the ileum of the small intestine. By the end of this course, you'll know that forever. And now as blood from the intestines circulates off to the liver, Monosaccharide molecules that are in it get transported off to the liver for processing. The liver is really an important organ, hugely important, tons of functions. Make sure you're taking care of yours.